Hello, Mayor. Hi, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? Thank you for joining us. Uh, my pleasure. I want to learn. <laughs> thank you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, we will be beginning our meeting in in a few minutes. Uh, please uh, appreciate the patience. Thank you. Jonathan? Yes, ma'am. All right, it's right, uh, 7.05, and I'm gonna start, the meeting, start the meeting now. Great, uh, just to let everybody know that uh, this meeting is being recorded. And it's being streamed live. Okay, great, thank you, thank you. Good evening, everyone. Compliance Commissioner Iris Seipel. 
following the tragic death of a seven-year-old girl who was struck by a car as she rode her bike in a crosswalk near Lakeside Elementary School earlier this year, I received many calls and emails from concerned residents about traffic safety near the school and traffic in general in the surrounding area. At first, many thought the accident happened because of the careless driver running through a stop sign. It was later determined that the driver of the car had suffered a medical episode causing him to run the stop sign and strike the child. It was brought to our attention that prior to this horrible tragedy, residents were very concerned about traffic flow and traffic safety in the area. Please know that we have heard you and we understand your concerns. In response, we have gathered experts to help us find possible options and solutions that will improve the flow of traffic and make this area, especially around the school, safer for all. Many folks are with me this evening to share what they have learned and how best to proceed. I am joined by our city manager, Charlie Dodge, city engineer, Carl Kennedy, police chief, Kip Champano, assistant police chief, Carlos Bermudez, Broward County Public Works Director, Scott Bruner, Lakeside Elementary Principal Catherine May, Bailey McDonald, and Allison Widashinsky, traffic safety representatives from Broward County Schools. School board member Patty Good has a school board meeting today, and she will try to join us if her meeting ends in time. I'd like to now turn this over to our city engineer, Carl, Carl Kennedy, for his presentation. Please hold any questions or comments until after all the presenting is complete. Thank you. Mr. Kennedy, can you start now, please? Uh, uh, good evening. Uh, my name is uh, Carl Kennedy, and uh, I have a short presentation about some of the traffic improvements uh, that are happening uh, at the intersection of um, 136 and uh, Northwest 10th Street. Uh, I, ha I have a, a short PowerPoint presentation that I will go through. I'll, I'll be reading it um, as well as presenting it. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Uh, I'm going to be discussing a little bit about the uh, Lakeside Elementary traffic improvements. Uh, I'll first do an overview, uh, do a summary of the scheduled improvements that are going to be, <clears throat> excuse me, performed by uh, Broward County Traffic Engineering Division. And in the end, we'll we'll take questions, comments, and suggestions uh, from from anyone who would like to to, that, to add to the conversation. Um, overviews: uh, Broward County Traffic Engineering Division has done a review of the intersection, and um, they have determined that uh, they will be performing uh, these uh, refurbishment of pavement marking and signage at the intersection in general. Uh, they'll, they'll do installation of additional signage, uh, including larger stop signs on several of the corners and installation of some new stop sign ahead signs in, in advance of the stop signs. Um, a traffic study was also performed and uh, uh, based on the results of that, a, a signal is not warranted at this time. Um, and uh, due to the refurbishment and replacement of the existing traffic control devices, and the installation of the new stop ahead and other signage, um, I wouldn't recommend uh, uh, installation of adi additional traffic control devices at this time. Um, so uh, I'll, I'll go through the list of some of the items that are going to be fixed and replaced. Uh, actually, all the items. Um, they're going to replace the uh, faded stop signs located on the on the center median. And this is for the northbound direction of, of 136. Uh, they're going to replace the four-way plaques located in the center median and the all-way all plaque. Uh, they're going to replace the stop signs uh, uh, and the four-way plaque on the southeast corner with a larger 36 by 36 inch stop sign uh, and, and a new all-way plaque. They're going to install additional stop ahead signs uh, approximately 100 foot south of of the of the intersection, 
Uh, they're going to refurbish uh, a variety of pavement markings in the area, the stop bars, uh, double yellows uh, around the bullnose, and some of the yellow diagonal pavement markings in the center median. Um, they'll also refurbish uh, the arrows uh, and four faded only uh, messages. They're going to also uh, refurbish the uh, right turn arrows. And there's uh, the, those reflective raised pavement markers, uh, they're, they're going to replace those. Uh, they're going to install new speeding fines, doubled sign, uh, as well as uh, new school crossing ahead assemblies on the median and the swale. And they're going to install three new school pavement messages and replace the overhead school zone 15 mile per hour H sign. Um, for the eastbound uh, travel on Northwest 10th Street, uh, they're going to replace the uh, four way plaque in the center median with an all way plaque. Um, they're going to replace the stop sign in the southwest corner with a 36 by 36 inch stop sign, uh, install a new stop ahead sign. Uh, they're going to refurbish uh, a lot of the pavement markings, the 24 inch stop bars. Uh, the faded yellow pavement markings are around the bull nose on the center median and the uh, faded two left turn arrows, the two faded right turn arrows, and they're going to replace the raised pavement markers in the center median as well. Uh, they'll install new end school zone signs as well, and they're going to replace the overhead school zone 15 mile per hour sign and install three new school uh, pavement messages and that that's all for the eastbound uh, for the westbound uh, traffic on northwest 10th uh, they're going to replace the uh, four-way plaque in the center median with an hallway they're going to replace the stop sign uh, with a 36 by 36 inch stop sign uh, they'll install stop ahead sign uh, approximately 100 feet west of the northwest 136 avenue intersection uh, they're going to re refurbish uh, additional pavement markings, uh, the 24-inch white stop bar, uh, the yellow pavement markings around the bullnose. Uh, they're going to install a new cross school crossing ahead assembly on both the median and the swale. Uh, they're going to install four new school pavement messages uh, and replace the overhead school zone 15 mile per hour sign and refurbish the uh, two faded left turn arrows and the two faded right turn arrows. Uh, southbound, um, going to install a new end school zone sign as well as replace the school zone 15 mile per hour head sign. Uh, there is some pavement markings in the north side of the intersection which um, are not on public right of way and uh, we will discuss with uh, the HOA about the uh, possibility of, of trying to refurbish those. Um, and with that, that's uh, the set of improvements that uh, are, are planned for this intersection. Um, and if it's okay, Commissioner, I'd like to turn it over to uh, uh, the Director of the Broward County Traffic Engineering Division, Scott Bruner, uh, whose division is actually doing these improvements, and he might be able to shed a little light on on uh, on this intersection. Um, so Mr. with Kennedy, that, Mr. Uh, I'll turn it over to Scott. Uh, good evening, everybody. My good evening, everybody. My name is Bruner. Bruner. Um, um, yeah, got a little bit of an echo. Sorry, got a little bit of an echo. Sorry. Um, um, so I wanted to so thank wanted you all for coming out tonight. Coming out tonight. Uh, uh, Carl did walk you through a long list of items that would be uh, mostly refurbishments and upgrades to the existing traffic at the intersection of 136 and 10th. Um, I I would say that in addition to doing those improvements, which are really just uh, traffic control enhancements uh, to make things look. Uh, newer, uh, increase their visibility, uh, increase their retro reflectivity. I think some of the concerns that we've heard about in the past at this location is that 
it's a wide intersection. It's, uh, you know, it's got several lanes in each direction. Uh, it's got a very long distance for the crosswalks for the, so the kids are uh, out there kind of out in the open out in the pavement for a long distance so so those issues are are of concern uh, as we mentioned earlier the traffic signal is not really warranted at this time there's um, the volumes that we usually warrant a signal it kind of comes close for two of the hours um, the morning peak hour of the school itself is the highest hour of the 24 hours, uh, but that in itself uh, won't warrant a traffic signal. So, you know, some of the ideas that have been presented in the past would be to convert this to a roundabout, tighten up the intersection, or to leave it in its more traditional uh, configuration, kind of a four leg intersection, but possibly tighten up some of those lanes or eliminate some of the lanes and uh, so that the interaction between uh, vehicles, pedestrians and bicyclists is a lot is a lot friendlier. So, I mean, those are options for for the city to consider. Uh, what we want to do tonight is that um, we're going to continue to monitor this intersection and our school safety coordinator, Stefan Ramator, is on the call here tonight. Uh, Stefan does a lot of the school safety investigations we go through you know we have um, thousands of school zones in the county we, in fact we have one of the largest school beacon systems in the united states so we keep busy rotating among among schools but uh stefan's going to go ahead and do some drone video just to get some uh, additional information on to the operation both at this intersection as well as to the actual school driveway to the south where uh, we, we've heard in the past that there was some thought uh, by the school board in the city to possibly prohibit left turns out uh, at that location, uh, kind of minimize some of the movements, which actually uh, often results in a, in a safer condition. So we, if that's a decision that the school and, and the city would like to proceed with, we could certainly uh, implement the traffic controls and the public right of way to facilitate that. Um, in terms of, and, you know, one of the things we did, of course, after, you know, the, the tragedy that occurred, um, we did do crash analysis and, uh, really for the past five years, the number of actual crashes in the vicinity has been relatively low. Uh, we typically see a lot more crashes at our signalized intersections and there was about a dozen or so, uh, since 2017 in or around the intersection itself, uh, a handful in the intersection in the middle of it, uh, angle collisions and side swipes. But overall, um, despite the tragic crash, there there was a pretty relatively good uh, safety record. However, it is a, a little bit of a daunting intersection to maneuver because of its size. Uh, fortunately, the, the volumes are not terribly high, they're, they're mild to moderate most of the day, but that's still something we can talk about. And um, as you can imagine, uh, our staff can't be everywhere. The, 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 the parents that, that, you know, drop their kids off and pick them up at school, the local residents, they know the intersections more by heart because they drive them every day than we do. So we're very interested in hearing uh, some of the local feedback from, from the residents and parents and, and the People uh, who work at the schools and the school district, is, of course, as well as the police department to gain some of their perspectives. So I hope that um, this could be a little bit interactive tonight so that we could get your feedback and we can address things that we don't know about or have not come to our attention or we didn't see just, you know, based on our field observations. So uh, I'll be glad to turn it back over to uh, either Carl or Commissioner Seipel. Yes, if I if I could, Mr. Bruner, thank you, thank you so much for your um, presentation, and and I know uh, we have a little bit more that we're going to be talking about, but I just want everyone to understand that tonight, I mean, we're not here to actually say this is specific action that we're taking. We're here tonight to talk about the issue that's that's there, the issues that have shown up out there, as well as um, our professionals are. Our, our traffic professionals, our police department, our engineers to provide us with, um, as a community, 
to provide us with options uh, and possibilities of, uh, you know, what may uh, need to be done in that area. And then we're going to have, we will have a little bit more conversation um, about all that and hopefully uh, more community involvement um, as far as uh, participation and um, expressing their ideas or their concerns that we can then come up with uh, with a, a plan that lays out exactly um, what the community wants, what our PD thinks is the best way, what our engineers say can happen and should happen and um, and and take it from there. Um, so tonight is really addressing the situation um, that happened, the not just the incident that happened, the terrible tragedy that happened, but also the um, concerns that residents in the area have shown uh, about, you know, they were they had concerns about traffic, traffic flow, traffic safety uh, long before this particular um, tragedy happened. So we're looking to address that um, not just at the school area, but uh, right at the school area, but a little bit more into some of the traffic that that flows into there as well. Some of the communities that um, that are having some issues. So, um, Mr. Kennedy, um, I, I will turn it back over to you. Great, uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Commissioner. Um, I was going to um, share a screen that uh, is from the Broward County Property Appraisers website. It's from the beginning of this year, um, which actually has taken during, um, I'm assuming it's uh, um, pickup time, but uh, <clears throat> that way, if there's people on uh, this <clears throat> call that would like to make some comments, maybe this uh, might actually uh, jog their memories a little bit. That's great, Mr. Kennedy, but I also wanted to give opportunity, give opportunity for me to speak as well. Speak as well. Great. So, yeah, I have that that uh, up on the screen. So, whoever would like to uh, speak next. Um, um, the, uh, the screen is blank screen right, is now. Blank right, right now. now. Oh, it is? Okay. Wow. And there you go. There you go. Uh, 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 there. There. Principal May, did Principal you want May, to did you want to anything? anything? Um, yeah, this this, yeah, might, this, be really, this might be a really really good opportunity for good me opportunity to for address me to what address I have been I have been at. looking at. Um, um, I've been the administrator, been the administrator at Lakeside, at Lakeside, Lakeside as the assistant principal, the principal and principal for um, the past nine years, and watching the traffic in and out, especially in the mornings, like you said, it's the morning time, the drop off period, and the um, uh, dismissal area. So um, the biggest concern I have that I, I witness all the time is especially um, entering and exiting my school. The main entrance is off of 136. And I'm looking at that because um, to the north, when, when you look at that screen, um, you know, up is north, right? And, and uh, the bottom is south. So you have um, what we're looking at is the north up there is my bus loop. So that's where a lot of students, um, my buses go and vans and then um, any other students that after the buses and vans leave, then I have my um, special needs and my fifth graders picked up over there. But, and that seems to be running smoothly because it seems like there's just a one way road. But when you look to the east of my school, the entrance, that intersection there, um, there's a big community to the right of the entrance. So if you were on 136 entering my school, going north, you're turning left. And then we have all those school, those uh, cars coming south 
entering the school. So we have about, you know, a back and forth of cars coming, entering my school from the north and cars entering my school to the south. And then when the school, the, the parents are leaving, now they have the opportunity to also go north or south. And that becomes quite congested, especially um, on top of that, you've got that community over to the east there that are also trying to go south. So that becomes, um, you know, in my opinion, it's very dangerous. I know that at the beginning and the end of years and, and in between, we really try to redirect parents, but them leaving my campus and turning left to go north on 136 and those all those cars that are going north and turning left into my campus, it it's just, um, you know, for lack of better words, a nightmare that I see. Um, so I always look at that. It would be so much nicer if the same way that the traffic is flowing on Northwest 10th Street to also flow entering and leaving my my campus just during those arrival and dismissal periods. I think that would really curb a lot of um, angst because um, I also have a lot of parents. If you see, um, there's a little field to the southeast um, off of 136th Street there that cars are dropping off and picking up children, parking and walking up. So that becomes quite um, congested. So that's that's my biggest fear because we don't have any signage at all for, you know, like exiting my building to make right turn only or, um, you know, anything like that. And I think that would really help the traffic flow. And um, because I also, we have those parents that are, live in that community to the east that um, we redirect all the time of not crossing right in front of the school because they just want to take their children and walk across the, you know, the, the lanes of traffic there instead of going north and using that intersection there where we do have crosswalks. So that's, that's my take on this traffic. Thank you, Principal May. We, we certainly, um, wanted to hear from you i mean because you're there you know every day you see it morning you see it afternoon and i know you're always out at um you know at uh, arrival and 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 pickup time and you you know you see it so your input is um is very important um everything i think well, i won't say everything but a lot of the things that we're looking at today um, might be a little bit challenging because just because and sometimes it's challenging just because you know, the old saying of who moved my cheese, nobody wants to really change anything. But sometimes, you know, as areas grow and and uh, communities um, become more involved, we, we have to look at, you know, moving our cheese maybe a little bit to make things a little bit different. And and certainly our, our driving uh, uh, impetus is always, uh, you know, the safety of the children first and everybody else kind of you know, comes in second place after that. So um, I'm, I'm hoping that um, I, I know Mr. Kennedy and Mr. Bruner and, and our PD took some notes of what, uh, you know, what you were saying tonight, and perhaps we can make that part of um, our, our ongoing discussion on how we're going to deal with this, uh, with these issues here. So thank you very much, Principal. Uh, You're we, welcome. We appreciate it. And I really appreciate you guys taking the time to listen to listen because, um, you know, like you said, um, you know, children come first and safety comes first. And even when we have officers that are out there, you know, there's no signage to say no drop off, no pickup there. You know, I do have officers that try to help, but I, I just think having signage there would help not eliminate because people are going to do what they want to do anyway. But at least we do have a lot of law abiding citizens that would respect those signs. And, right. you know, and, and I just want to make sure that our kids are safe. 
Yeah, and we, you know, we have we have a very active um, police department and very, uh, very involved in 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 our communities. Um, you know, as as evidenced just by you know our SROs and how many you know of our officers are just out in the community, you know, all the time and providing for us. So um, their input also is very uh, very important. They come at it from a different angle than, but collectively we will all you know, throw our, our, our two cents into the, into the hat here and figure out how we're going to, how we're going to help solve, you know, some of these safety problems that we have um, in this area. And actually throughout the entire city, we, we, we have areas and we're, we're trying to target those now we become much more aware um, as the city has developed and grown up, things change and we need to change with it in order to um, provide you know, the, the, the safety for, you know, like I said, the children and the pedestrians, but, you know, we also have to think about just the residents that live in the area that they need to be able to just have a, a, a free flowing through lane to get where they're going as well, you know, and so um, it's a lot that sort of has to be mixed together, but I, I'm, I'm confident we're going to come up with some, some good, uh, some good suggestions and then some good options to actually put in. Uh, Broward County actually, is, as you saw from what Mr. Kennedy put on in Broward County, and, and I want to thank you, um, Scott, and, and all of your folks um, have already done a number of things um, uh, for the area. There still is, you know, there still is a lot more to be done. So, um, so we're going to you know, keep working. I see that um, city manager is here, that our police chief is here, um, the mayor is here. Um, so I would ask if either of them would like to uh, comment on anything? Uh, Good evening. I'll, I'll get on. This is the uh, police chief, Kip Shempano. So thanks for everyone for being on the call, number one. Um, this is how things get resolved when you get enough brain power in the room from different angles. We usually end up with a pretty good solution uh, as a community and as a city. Um, as to Principal May's uh, comment about her main entrance and exit there on 136, I do agree that that is a uh, that is a concern that traffic is allowed to go pretty much in every direction at that intersection, essentially uncontrolled other than for a stop sign. Um, and I know that this was mentioned before about possibly making that exit a right turn only maybe during school uh, school uh, dismissal hours or arrival hours. We do have some signage like that at some other schools around the city. Uh, off the top of my head, one 108 in Pembroke Road, where the city East Charter School is, mm -hmm. you can't uh, you can't come out there and make a left and go across Pembroke Road, even right. though it's an open median, because today it's just too much traffic uh, just during those hours. My only concern with it would be, you know, as you as you and we, I won't be able to do it on this screen, but if you scroll further south, to get down towards Pines Boulevard there to the south. I guess the real question would have to be looked at is how many parents are going to want to go north towards Pembroke Falls? Because the next break in the roadway, if you see that there, it actually doesn't even have a southbound left turn lane to even make a U-turn. But that would be the first place somebody's gonna try to make a U-turn uh, right there in the center of your screen. Uh, to go right back north, right back into the uh, to that intersection up there. Um, so that that'll probably back up some traffic in that left through lane as people attempt to make a U-turn. Uh, but the next one down does have a turn lane, but now you're almost to Pines, which is fine. Um, but if there is a substantial number of people that do want to go north, obviously we'll be feeding them, you know, just a longer route back up to the intersection there. Um, and I don't know, you know, and maybe the principal can chime back in on it. Um, the amount of traffic coming out of that neighborhood to the east of the school, which unfortunately coincides the same time it's busy, there's the same time those people are trying to go to work. So you know, <laughs> let, letting, letting them make a left turn as they do now to go south to Pines to get to I-75 or whichever way they're going to work. Um, you know, you'd, you'd probably have to consider trying to make that a right turn only, and I guess you'd be sending them north, uh, because that that is the safety concern she's talking about is the center of that unmanned intersection with traffic coming in multiple directions. 
Um, that's something we really got to think about how we can attempt to quell that without exacerbating the problem in a different way. There's always a cause and effect. But um, Principal May, is, do you, is there a substantial amount of cars coming out of there? In, probably not as much in the afternoon, but definitely in the morning. You're you're absolutely right. It's the morning time. I feel really bad for those residents over there because I'm like, you know, the horns start honking and and people are trying to get through all over the place. People are trying to park and drop off kids. These people are trying to get to work and they they get caught up in all the you know all of the you know our school traffic. In the afternoon, I don't notice um, that nearly as bad. I think they probably learned that. If I'm going to go run some errands, it's not going to be between 1:30 and and 2:15. Um, but the morning is is the is the problem. I I wouldn't have to say the afternoon from just you know from my observation, um, in that area. Could I add a comment? Who is that? This is Leonard, um, a parent. Okay, Mr. O'Mara. Yes. Um, okay, regarding that that school entrance um, to what Principal May was saying, especially at that two p.m. pickup, uh, and also drop off in the morning, you have uh, for the communities to the south of the school, you have children that are walking on that sidewalk uh, north to to school, uh, and as Principal May said, there there are people that are parking either on that grassy area. On the on the grassy area right next to the um, sidewalk, and sometimes cars are overlapping the sidewalk. So when I'm walking my child to school, I typically have them in my left hand, so that and I make sure cars you know pull up and park before we pass because that could be you know a car tries to get up over that sidewalk lip, and um, you know can can probably jump forward and, and you know hit a child. Uh, but I think that's an additional um, issue uh, that we find there. So. Um, you know, maybe maybe more police presence right at that intersection to how to help guide traffic in addition to signage. Uh, so yes, right there, and there's a sidewalk that's heading south uh, past that grassy area to the communities to the south. Um, you know, parents are parking and then walk. So the south walkers, I guess, are affected uh, by some of that um, as an additional kind of traffic issue to consider. Okay. Thank, thank you, Mr. Romero. We we uh, will take you know certainly take uh, take that into 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 our notes and make sure. Uh, I, before I really open up for uh, for an open forum for folks to to speak, um, is there um, I, Ms., uh, city manager or uh, mayor anybody else that would like to? Um, what uh, also uh, Miss Bailey. Uh, or Ms. McDonald, I believe, if you're here, if there's anything you'd like to add, now would be the time to do so, please. Hi, good evening. So um, I'm, I have not observed the intersection where parents are entering and exiting. Who is this speaking? This is Bailey. I'm just responding to you. Sorry about that. Um, I'm the health and safety coordinator for the school district. Uh -huh. And um, I have I have observed the intersection where um, where a lot of the work has been done by the county, but I have not observed the entryway to uh, the parent loop and then the exit. So I am, you know, completely open to requiring uh, parents to only make a right out of there and only making a right into the school if if the county and the city and the police uh, believe that would be the safer option. Um, I I would. Uh, have that signage posted. Um, I would request uh, no left turn um, on Northwest 136. So whatever um, whatever the traffic engineers think is appropriate there, the, the district is certainly willing to go that way. Uh, well, we, we do appreciate that. And I'm sure that um, if that uh, decision, you know, comes to that being a decision, we certainly will be reaching out to you to uh, you know, to make sure that everybody is um, exactly on the same page with it happening. Absolutely, we, we will. We are definitely looking to partner to make this the safest possible solution for everyone. Well, we we really appreciate that. I'm sure the the parents in the community appreciate um, you know appreciate your willingness to 
you know, for all of us to work together to to figure out what's the best uh, the best road to take on this. So, thank you, thank you again, Bailey, um, City Manager. Yes, Commissioner. Now I've been listening to uh, all of the conversations. I think uh, we're moving in, in a very positive uh, position. Uh, I certainly want to appreciate our thanks to uh, Mr. Bruner and uh, school district staff for wanting to work with us and the principal of the school. I think with everyone who is involved in this process based on those recommendations, uh, we need to coordinate and uh, actually decide on what the final action should be. So uh, those corrections uh, and changes can be implemented immediately. And I think if once you open it, there are any other positive suggestions by the residents, I think that would be very helpful to us. Good, great. And, and like I said uh, earlier, city manager was that tonight was to just bring information forward to the community as to what the situation is there at that and and what we need to do in order to make it safer based upon what our engineers, our PD experts have told us options are some possibilities. And then, um, you know, then I guess we need to figure out as a community what it really is the best um, the best path to take on that. So uh, right. um, I'm sure we'll we'll have a couple more discussions about this, but but I will I will say, um, city manager, that um, I, I would hope that we would be able to um, see some improvements, see some changes quicker rather rather than later, sooner rather than later. I mean, I know we are coming up to the end of the school year, but it would really be very nice knowing that we would start next school year with a safer um, safer pat you know pattern or path out there um, for our students and our families to be able to get into in and out of school. So. Um, as, 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 as is everything, Mr. Dodge, um, sooner rather than later, you know, sooner rather than later. Um, any any oh, yes, I apologize. Um, I totally agree with you because my experience is that we're winding down this, this school year. We have the summer break and it's always what I always try to do at the beginning of every school year because we have brand new parents, all of those kindergarten students and brand new parents that come in. So we have to retrain the parents on what to do and how to do it. You know, so um, typically we have meetings. Um, I send out parent links. We you have all hands on deck the first couple of weeks, reminding parents, you know, huh. stay in the car loop, but, you know, really, pushing it for the beginning of every school year. And that is very, very helpful that if we set, if we, if it's possible, if we can set the tone from day one, when school starts, um, I, I think that's extremely important because it's always hard to change patterns um, after a month into school, you know, because we really work hard at trying to um, just educate the parents on safety and security, and this is the best way to do this. And if everybody cooperates, we can get through the lines a lot faster. The kids can get home quicker, you know, and safer. So um, mm -hmm. I, I totally agree with you with um, it, if at all possible, when if we can get some things together for the beginning of the school year, that would be awesome. Fabulous, fabulous. Thank um, you. I see Mr. Bruner has his hand up. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Seipel. Uh, yeah, with regard to that, I totally agree. And, um, you know, there's there's certain things once we agree on what next steps are, I mean, we could get, especially the signage for the, the no parking along the sidewalk. That's that's kind of a no brainer. And we, we can certainly yeah. do that right away once we get, you know, exactly where everybody wants those signs. With with regard to kind of eliminating some of the turns at the school's entrance on 136, um, it's going to be a little tricky. We may want to consider doing that incrementally. We may want to do the right turn prohibition. I'm sorry, the right turn only. Uh, prohibit the left turn out first. Get that in place over the summer, uh, because you you know 
we are going to be kind of creating another situation downstream at Fifth Street, I believe it is. You, you know, you're going to, the U-turn seems pretty doable by most of the passenger vehicle type cars. So that's probably going to be okay. But if we were to prohibit the northbound to westbound left turn into the school at the same time, uh, you'll be forcing, you know, pretty good amount of traffic up to the hallway stop and then there'll be you turning you know you'll you'll have just a lot of variables happening all at the same time at the start of a new school year so we need to think through that a little bit but um i, I you know i think prohibiting that left turn might certainly be a good start and then you can see what the operation looks like after that and if we really need to get rid of the northbound left uh, that's something we could do you know after that after after everybody kind of adjusts to the first set of changes. Um, thank you, and and uh, you know, and and again, uh, you know, that, that's great. But I I want to remind everybody that um, we're only we're only talking maybe forty five minutes in the morning and forty five minutes to an hour in the afternoon. That that a lot of this stuff would be in effect if we're putting up signs that say. You know, uh, this is valid during these school, you know, only during these school hours. So it, it's not, um, it's not again like that we're looking to totally, uh, you know, make it a 24 7 change on a number of these items. Some of them will only be school hours as well. That's, that's correct. We definitely would sign it by time of day for sure. Okay. I got a, um, Mr. Bonilla, I got a message from Dan Cooperman that would like to speak, but he doesn't have a way to raise his hand. Not a problem, Commissioner Sapo. I'm actually, can you hear me? I can. Perfect. So, so again, good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I just want to put some uh, uh, rules of the game to just make sure that we have a uh, 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 back and forth orderly. Uh, we have um, people that have. E um, signed on through the regular WebEx platform. Uh, people who are raising their hands, you can raise your hands if, if, and I put the comments and instructions on how to do so through the chat. Also, um, the people that have called in, um, I can identify you, uh, but you can raise your hand by pressing uh, star, uh, star three uh, to raise your hand. So if you're calling in, I see that we have two callers. If you'd like to speak and you'd like to raise your hand, press star three on your phone and I, I could uh, identify you and you can speak. Uh, but in the meantime, Commissioner Seppel, you have a few people that uh, would like to speak. Uh, but the first one is uh, Ms. Liliana Simcoe. You can go ahead and speak, Ms. Thank you, Mr. Bonilla and, and Madam Commissioner. Uh, one question. I see the study didn't approve the traffic light. What about an intermittent light on the corner on the main main uh, intersection? I'm I'm sorry. I could barely hear you. All I could hear was something traffic light. Could you state that again, please? Okay. And the beginning of the meeting, it was mentioned in a study about the tra a possible traffic light on the main corner. On the main intersection 136, and I, the studies say it doesn't qualify for that. What about an intermittent light? Hmm. Mr. Bruner, Carl? Uh, intermittent light meaning one hour a day? Ms. Simco, is that what you're asking for, the, an intermittent light that would only work at certain times? It could be continually because during the day and evening, we have many cycling going around the area. And right. sometimes we don't see them or they, they just can surprise me. And we, I personally, be in danger to hit one of them. Mm -hmm. I I hear what I hear what you're saying, but also, um, Mr. Brunner, maybe um, it might be best for you to answer that uh, because it would have been the county that would have done the study uh, for the warrant, I guess, for a light there. Uh, yeah, we um, 
the criteria that we use is pretty much an eight hour criteria. And so there's, there's certain volume thresholds that, that need to be met. And if we have other engineering factors, if we do have a crash experience or some other things that are happening, we'll, we'll, you know, use a lower threshold. There's a 70 and 80% threshold, but we're not, we're not really even close to that happening yet. I, I think the key thing with that intersection is just, it's just, it's so large and, um, you know, it's, it's convenient in, in that sense, but it's, um, it, it really has too much capacity in a sense. So, uh, you know, it might be a candidate. I mean, some, some cities have, and, you know, this might be seem crazy, but some cities have temporarily, you know, reduced the, you know, through pain and delineators and that type of thing, reduced the, uh, the size of their intersections in order that they get shorter walk distances, get the pedestrians uh, out of harm's way uh, sooner and have less exposure for them. And plus you tighten up the intersection, you have less delay and you have better interaction, better eye to eye contact. So that might be something that, that could work there. Uh, I mean, we're pretty far away from um, warranting a signal. And, and I would say that, and this is something that most people really don't realize, I, I think that a lot of our signalized intersections throughout the county, you know, they have five to 10 to 15 to 20 crashes per year. So when you have, and I'm not, you know, trying to minimize any crash because any crash is unacceptable, but a lot of times we signalize intersections like this and, and the crash rates actually go up. Plus here, um, you have the school zone, you have the 50 mile per hour school zone. Um, on the North Lake you have coming out of kind of a gated area and the traffic is somewhat metered. I, I, we didn't see a lot of really high speed activity, at least in the vicinity of the school. Um, you know, you, you signalize it and then all of a sudden, you know, one way, you know, east west has the green and there's going to be a higher propensity for speed. So I'd, I'd be really, uh, you know, sometimes I'll always stop in a, in a school zone is, is one of the safest conditions that we see. So, you know, again, we're certainly um, willing to talk more options, but that's just kind of my opinion right now. But Ms. Simcoe, so um, so what Mr. Greenwood was saying was that sometimes um, a stoplight. Well, at at first we might think that that might be the answer to the problem to the to the problem to the issue. Sometimes it is it, it's more of an issue. And what they're kind of recommending, and and again we have to have discussion about to see where we're going to go with it. Is to have uh, um, what did you uh, what you call Mr. Brenner an all always stop where all four you know uh, inter parts of the intersection have stop you know have stops nothing nobody passes through without without the stop um, and so um, uh, you know that certainly will be something that will be uh, your thoughts as well as his thoughts uh, will be part of our discussion going forward with when we're making up whatever decisions are made for that you know for that area. But thank you for your thoughts on that. Mr. Bruno mentioned something about the decrease the size of the street. That can be also helpful if we, a traffic light is not an option. Well, I guess that that's something that would be added to our list of discussions to see uh, what impact that may you know what impact that may have uh, positive or negative you know impact. And again, we're we're gathering a lot of information um, from the profession engineers from our police department and and from you all as residents that are actually out there every day you know seeing what's happening and your your thoughts are very um uh, and ideas are very important to us so that's i mean that's the purpose for us having this meeting tonight is to be able to have some of that discussion and hear from you all uh, you know what what your thoughts are so thank thank you for joining us i do appreciate it Great, thank you, Commissioner Saipo, and thank you, Ms. Simcoe. Uh, the next person is Dana Kirishi. Uh, if you can please uh, go on with your comment, thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, first of all, thank you, everyone, for joining on this call. I, as a parent, I, I truly am like I, I can't express my gratitude that you're giving attention to our school. Um, and I just wanted to express. Uh, I have to agree with. Uh, I think it was Mr. Omera or Omera, Omara, but some police presence would be, I think, one of the most ideal things 
whether it's in you know the big intersection and what is it the east entrance um the police presence i think every single day when i drop my children off i i question why is there not a police officer at least helping direct or even if it's only in the first beginning of the school year where they you know they can teach us what is expected at that intersection and and maybe drop off after a few months fine i understand you may not be able to support a police officer there every single morning for drop up and every afternoon uh for school release but maybe for the first few months so that we can all learn what is expected but police presence i think is the biggest thing that i would like to put my two cents in and then i also wanted to say like i really like somebody had the idea of you know one change at a time especially on that east entrance where we have a lot of demands um making like getting a right turn only for certain times i i i agree with that <laughs> so and thank you thank you again everyone thank you that that was all <laughs> thank you thank you miss kershey Perfect. Thank you. All right. So next person is a call in number that begins with a uh, 9544 and then ends with its last two digits 32. I will unmute you. Please go ahead and say your comment. Thank you. Uh, yes. Hi. Uh, can you hear me? We can hear you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, hi. Uh, uh, my name is Dan Cooperman. I'm the president of the board of directors. I can't hear you. I'm sorry. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Sorry about that. My name is Dan Cooperman. I'm the president of the board of directors of Pembroke Falls. And I just wanted to update you all on uh, what we're doing uh, because needless to say, traffic is a significant concern for us as well. Uh, we are uh, right now looking at installing speed signs on both 136 and Taft. And um, they will have cameras uh, for identification uh, of uh, any speeders that we encounter. Uh, so I wanted to just make the surrounding community aware of that. And we're also looking at, uh, at flashing lights on uh, stop signs uh, within the community. Um, we've been uh, looking at this now for about 45 days. And uh, we've come up with some, um, uh, some options and I'm hoping uh, by the middle of this summer that we will uh, we will have these installed. So I simply wanted to give everyone an update. That's what we're doing within the gates of Pembroke Falls. Thank you, Mr. Cooperman. Appreciate it. Great, thank you. All right, the next the last person who has uh, raised their hand is uh, Sebastian Simcoe. Please go ahead, sir. All right, I guess so, there you go. Uh, oh, sorry, the Wi Fi is a little choppy. I hope you can hear me clearly. We can. Uh, first of all, I appreciate that this meeting was set up for the community and that what we're discussing right now isn't going to be the final solution, but more of a short term relief. Um, I'm a resident here who has grown up in the area for the past 20 years. I, I actually went to Lakeside back when Mrs. Free to me was the principal and I graduated high school in Flanagan back in 2019. I've seen this area grow exponentially and I've seen that a lot of drivers currently use this route as a shortcut to avoid the mess of Flamingo and Pines. And it's, it's a bit of a concern because this intersection is not meant as an area for high traffic besides the, during the school dismissal hours. And um, uh, I want to see this intersection be treated more of a residential community area, a place where people can go out after they come back from work to go out for a little walk with the family, to go and bike, to go jog, to do whatever. And right now there is a bit of anxiety, um, especially in that intersection in particular because of just how wide it is. I just wanna see I want to stress that in the long term, I'd like to see um, the people in charge of this intersection uh, prioritize pedestrians uh, first and foremost. Uh, I, I did remember hearing somebody mention that they 
to possibly tighten this intersection a bit, perhaps with like a roundabout or you know a third right turn lane, I'd be open to that. Um, just to reiterate, I like to see this intersection be prioritized for pedestrians. Uh, thank you. Thank you, uh, Sebastian, for your for your comments. Jonathan, do we have any other um, any other hands up? No more hands up, Commissioner Sample. Thank you. Okay. Um, any of our presenters, uh, um, any comments that you would like to make? You know, from anything that you've heard this evening. Uh, Commissioner Seipel, this is Scott Bruner again. I um, well, I was I was kind of encouraged to hear that uh, there was some interest in tightening up the intersection, and I know I, I don't want to create work or a capital program for the city, but there are, like I said, there there are some um, ways to kind of test how that would work, and uh, we would, you know, our agency would certainly be willing to work with the city and, and try to figure out. Uh, if that's something worthwhile, and if it is, you know, possibly testing it just to see what that would look like, because uh, the gentleman who who was just on, um, <laughs> when an intersection gets this big, it is intimidating to everybody who's on foot or on bicycle. Uh, you know, it's it's I'm sure it's very intimidating to you know any crossing guards you have out there as well, and um, so I, I I think that might be something worthwhile to look at, and and yes, it might. Add another 10 or 20 seconds to the vehicle, you know, commute or wherever they're going. But I think that, you know, pedestrian safety is, is, you know, absolutely critical. So uh, I appreciate those comments. Thank you. Right, right, right. I, I do think that we've had um, some, some good comments from, uh, you know, a good presentation from uh, what I, I'm calling you all the experts out there, engineers and, and, and all that we've some good information that you have provided to us. And um, um, I'm very pleased that residents um, were able to um, uh, join us and to, uh, you know, express their concerns and their their thoughts um, on what they'd like to see happen. Um, and Principal May, certainly, um, you know, uh, your comments carry a lot of weight. You, you, you're, you're there every day. You're every day, every day and you see it and you're, you know, you're the one that really has to deal with um, so much of it. So um, right there at the school, but I don't want to, I don't want to lose sight of the facts um, while we continue to talk about what has happened right at the particular intersection of the school. Um, you know, this, this issue has, has little fingers. I mean, you make a few changes here or a change there, and it does affect some surrounding areas as well. So when when we are talking about this, uh, any changes or any proposals for changes, we also have to remember that I think the police chief said it. You know, for for every action, there's a reaction, or everything has an effect. Once you uh, make a change, there's another effect that happens, and so you know we have to be cognizant of that as well. Um, but I again just want to say that we are very uh, want to let let our school folks know and our residents know that the city is very. Um, very adamant. This commissioner is very adamant that, that along with the city and great support from the city that we're going to find a solution and make this a safer uh, area, not just around the school, but uh, but even you know going out. Some little the little things kind of go out from there as well. Um, and Pembroke Falls community, the waterways, Lowell's Landing, all of those residents. You know we we have to we have to address their issues um, as well uh, on on traffic flow. So, um, Mr. Kennedy, did you have anything else that you wanted to um, add this evening? No, I'm just uh, glad that we had uh, such good conversation and, and lots of good suggestions. Okay, great. And um, I see um, City Clerk Marlene Graham is here. Ms. Graham, did you have anything that you wanted to add? Good evening, Commissioner Seipel. I appreciate you calling on me and appreciate being here to listen to the information being provided. Thank you. Okay, great. All right. Um, City Manager, before we close up, do you have anything else you'd like to add? No, I do not, Commissioner. I think it's been a great meeting. Okay, fabulous. 
All right, everyone. Um, if there is uh, nothing else, um, I'm going to go ahead and close this. I want to thank everybody. And um, this is this is clearly not the end. This is kind of a more of a formal beginning of addressing uh, the situation there. And um, you all will please stay tuned for uh, what will be coming next um, and some of the plans. We, we may even uh, come up with some proposals and have another community meeting to let you all know what some of the thoughts are. So thank you all. Have a great evening. And um, to, to all of you all that participated, um, our engineers, our school people, um, our PD, and our city clerk, and everybody, I want to thank you so much for your time and your effort. Um, we are trying to address our residents' concerns. So thank you all, and have a great evening, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Circle. Commissioner Circle.